to the insufferable Bengals fan base, to the arrogant Cincinnati mayor, to the cocky players like Eli Apple running his mouth on Twitter and Mike Hilton disrespecting our beloved Arrowhead Stadium, along with the several Bengals players backing his disrespect. I wanna tell you the story of 392 days. 392 days ago, the Bengals narrowly escaped with a three point victory over the Chiefs in week 17 in 2021. Then again, four weeks later in the AFC Championship, and finally in week 13 of this 2022 season. For the last 392 days, Chiefs Kingdom has had to deal with your arrogance and disrespect. The endless talk about Joe Burrow owning the Chiefs and Mahomes being his son. The never-ending relentlessness that came out of his fan base. Well, guess what? While you were flaunting your three-point victories in Super Bowl 56 loss, Chiefs Kingdom kept receipts. You had this coming for 392 days, Houday Nation. Kadarius Tony, Willie Gay Jr., Juju Smith-Schuster, Legereus Sneed, McCole Hardman, and Patrick Mahomes' ankle all injured in this game. The Chiefs essentially running a practice squad, and it doesn't matter. You can blame the refs. You can whine about your own line. You can cry about the outcome. You can cope by claiming it was rigged. Well, guess what? Your excuses are invalid and they bore me. Eli Apple, Mike Hilton, Joseph Burrow, Cincinnati Mayor off top Pearl and lastly, Houday Nation. I guess you had to play us. Enjoy eating this and we'll see you next year. Back in the Super Bowl, for the third time in five years, which, by the way, five years, those are all five years that Mahomes has ever been a starter in this league. In five years, Patrick Mahomes has been to five conference championships, and he's now won three out of those five. I'm just, I'm done with it. I'm done with anybody ever again, ever doubting Patrick LaVon Mahomes the second. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I don't give a shit about what people say about me talking about Mahomes, what people say about Mahomes himself. I don't give a shit. He is the modern day Michael Jordan of his league. And it's not even a fucking debate, in my opinion. I've never seen another quarterback in every year he's ever played in the league go to five conference titles, win three of them. I've never seen a quarterback win a game of this magnitude with a bad ankle and a practice squad receiving core around him. I've never seen it. Only Patrick LaVon Mahomes II has ever done this. And this is why they need to put him in the Hall of Fame before he even retires. Not saying now, not saying next year, but in a good 10 years from now, and he's still playing, he's still in a chief uniform at 37 years old, Put him in the Hall of Fame. I don't even give a shit. He deserves it. The Chiefs win the coin toss. The Bengals get the ball first. And the Chiefs defense would make an early statement. In three minutes, the Bengals would run five plays. On third and nine, Joe Burrow gets sacked by Frank the Shark Clark. And the Bengals have to punt it away. The Chiefs get the ball back. Which, by the way, very first drive of the game. Legereus Sneed, our number one cornerback, out. Concussion. He's done for the game. After the first drive, Ciardi knew really early on it was going to take a lot for the Chiefs to get over that hump. Coming into this game, I didn't have high, high expectations. The Chiefs, we don't know how Mahomes is going to look with his ankle. We don't know how Travis Kelsey is going to look with his back problems. We just don't know. We don't have enough information about how serious these injuries actually are. So... You have Mahomes on a bad ankle, Travis Kelsey's back bothering him, and then Legereus Sneed goes out. First drive of the game, just brutal. The Chiefs then get the ball back, and they would get a field goal in seven plays, three minutes, 21 seconds. Harrison Bucker from 43 yards. He is good. The Bengals get the ball back, and they would be forced to go three and out as Joe Burrow is once again sacked. It's a split by Willie Gay and Frank Clark. Then the very next play, Cincinnati would get a delay of game penalty so Burrowhead Stadium isn't really favoring Burrow at all early in the game. The very next play after that, Joe Burrow would get sacked again, this time by Chris Jones. Chris Jones has his first career playoff sack. The Bengals would punt. The Chiefs get the ball back, and here's what happens, right? They get down to the Cincinnati 9, and Isaiah Pacheco, 
up for nine yards, gets the touchdown, only for it to be nullified by the referees on a terrible, weak, no good holding call. And the problem I had with this is, well, this was the type of holding that happens every single snap of every single game. It wasn't terrible. It didn't affect the outcome of the play. If you're going to call holdings, keep it consistent. Don't just pick and choose what plays you're going to call them. That's exactly what this ref crew did today. I didn't know Carl Sheffers was a part of this game, but apparently he tried his best. The Chiefs get a touchdown taken away, stripped away from them, stolen from them because of a terrible holding call. So they would have to eventually settle for a field goal 24 yards from Harrison Butker. Not to mention on the first Kansas City drive, Kadarius Toney dropped a pass right in his hands in the end zone and, and that would actually have to result in that 43 yarder from Butker. So what should have been 14-0 was 6-0 after two Kansas City drives. The Bengals get the ball back and let's see what happens here. Joe Burrow is sacked again on first and 10 of the Cincinnati 49 by Karloftis. So everybody's getting a sack early in this game. The Bengals O-line early on is proving that they're going to struggle. So what is that? Four sacks allowed just through one quarter of this game early in the second quarter. They have four sacks already throughout the game. Eventually, they would get down to the Kansas City 15 red zone time for the Bengals, and they would be stopped by the Kansas City defense, settling for a 30-yard field goal from Evan McPherson. The Chiefs receive the ball back. And four minutes, 43 seconds later on eight plays, they would go 75 yards and they get the touchdown. But not before, on third and one, Mahomes was sacked for no loss, no gain, but he was sacked at the Cincinnati 14. And Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes made the gutsy, gutsy decision to go for it on fourth and one of the Cincinnati 14. You want to know what Patrick LaVon Mahomes the second does on this next play on fourth and one at the Cincinnati 14. He throws to the end zone for Travis Kelsey right into Kelsey's hands for the touchdown. First Chiefs touchdown of the game. Well, really second, but the first one that counts. The first one that isn't dropped or nullified by the refs. The extra point is good. Just a gutsy, gutsy call. 13-3 Chiefs. The Bengals get the ball back. And on their third play of the drive, Burrow would get flustered. He would panic. And he would throw up a jump ball for Jalen Watson, who has an interception on Joe Burrow. And the Chiefs, what they would do next, actually kind of fucking sucked. Three straight incomplete passes. Not a single run at all. When Pacheco has been doing good thus far, not a single run at all. You have two minutes left in the half. You just get the ball back. You pick off Joe Burrow. The last thing you need is to go three and out. You absolutely have to get three here. They don't. They go three and out on three straight incomplete pass attempts. I just, I, I couldn't understand the play calling on this drive. I couldn't understand it. Three plays, zero yards. They knocked off a crucial 19 seconds. Just a terrible drive for the Chiefs. And it was costly because the Bengals would get the ball back just 19 seconds later, as I stated, and they would eventually go down and get a field goal, but not before. But first, before that field goal, on third and two at the Cincy 13, Joe Burrow would throw another interception, this time to Juan Thornhill. It was nullified by a Brian Cook defensive pass interference penalty, which I entirely agree with. It's clear as day. I mean, just take a look at it. It's clear as day. He just hit Hayden Hurst way too early. That's a simple play. As soon as it happened, I was like, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Brian Cook, who's now having to play because of Legereus Sneed being out with a concussion, proved that he was riding the bench for a reason. I went to week two, the Arrowhead opener this year against LA. Brian Cook gathered two penalties that game just by celebrating on the bench, running on the field, no helmet, just taunting for no reason. Brian Cook has a lot to work on as a, as a, as a player because he talks way too much for his role. He talks way too much. I've had a bone to pick with him all year because he doesn't get any playing time, rightfully so, but when he does, he does stupid shit like this. Hits way too early and that you're already seeing the effects of Legereus Sneed being out with a concussion. So the Bengals get the ball back like it's nothing and they would make a couple of deep plays. They would get to the third and goal at the Kansas City Five and they would not get the touchdown. They would settle because they have eight. Listen, man, they have, they have a, a couple of seconds left on the clock. It's either you run a play and hope for a touchdown from five yards out, which is not going to happen, or 
you just take your three points. And they took the three points. On third and goal, they lined up McPherson. He gets it. It's 13-6 Kansas City going into halftime. To begin the second quarter, the Chiefs did what they weren't supposed to do, and that was go three and out once again. You get the ball back uh, from winning the coin toss. You start off with the ball and you don't do anything with it. You go three and out, extremely disappointing. And what I, what I don't understand is on third and eight, Mahomes threw a deep, deep overthrow bomb intended for Marquez Valdez Scantling. It's third and eight. There's no reason to throw it that far. Just, I love you, Mahomie, but there was no reason to do that. Just take what yards you can get. But and, and the result of it is a three and out. And it felt all too familiar. It felt like an exact repeat of the last three games because it's the Chiefs who do stupid mental shit in the second half of the games versus the Bengals. This is how we always get edged out at the end by three points. Is one dumb mistake on the Chiefs' end that leads to them not getting any points. And this seemed costly for the Chiefs at the time, and it almost was. The Bengals get the ball back, and they tie it up. As they would run eight plays in three minutes, 35 seconds. It's a T. Higgins jump ball. <laughs> He's double covered. I mean, okay, to be fair, Thornhill was a good three yards out when the ball arrived to T. Higgins. It was Jalen Watson that wasn't able to come up with the jump ball. He wasn't able to do anything about it. T. Higgins just catches in the end zone, basically one-on-one -on -one for the touchdown. And the Bengals tied up at 13. Thir it's 13-13. The Chiefs get the ball back, and they must respond. But two plays before this T. Higgins touchdown, Willie Gay goes down with an injury, and he doesn't come back in the game. So here you go. That's two injuries on the day. On the third play of this Chiefs drive, would you look at that? We have another injury. This time it's McCall Hardman. McCall Hardman gets hurt, and that's number three on the day for the Chiefs as far as injuries go. So just fantastic to see that. It's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. Despite McCall Hardman's injury, and by the way, this was his first game back in several weeks. I think week nine was the last game he had for the Chiefs. So this was his return game, and it seemed like he re-aggregated his injury uh, that he'd been dealing with since all this time. So I think they just unfortunate for him. But the boys play on. The Chiefs eventually get to the red zone and on third and 10 at the Cincinnati 19. So they're 19 yards out, third and 10. Mahomes throws an absolute bullet, an absolute bullet to Marquez Valdez Scantling. And I, it, it's just unreal. What he does here. The ball had about this much room to not get tipped by the Bengals defense. And it found its way right into MVS's hands. Just an absolute threading of the needle play by Patrick LeVon Mahomes the second. And this is just classic Mahomes. No other quarterback is throwing a bullet like that. Threading the needle like that in that situation in the league. I'm sorry it's not happening. I don't give a shit when you want to argue. If you want to argue, I don't give a shit. It's not happening. Mahomes proving why he's the best quarterback in the league and proving why he's still the best quarterback in the league even with a bothersome ankle the Bengals get the ball back and the Chiefs defense steps up huge as they would get a stop on third and 17 Burrow has an incomplete pass to T Higgins and they would have to punt on the punt the Chiefs would get a 10-yard penalty for offensive holding on guess who Brian Cook so Brian Cook I've heard his name twice in this game and both times it was because there was a flag involved so the Chiefs received the ball back and the un fathomable happens that might be a little exaggerated but on first and 10 at the cincinnati 46 mahomes just he just makes an uncharacteristic weird mistake he gets the snap and he tries to throw a screen and it just rolls off his hand for a fumble just really weirdly really weirdly and the fumble is recovered by Cincinnati. And it was at this point where I was like, well, this fucking sucks. That is how you lose games. Because that fumble came with one minute left in the third. I'll tell you what. Last time we played the Bengals in the regular season, it was a costly Travis Kelsey fumble late in the game. That was the result of the Bengals' win. So it was just terrible vibes from here on out because the Bengals would turn that fumble into a touchdown. It's a Perrine two-yard rush. And the game is tied at 20 apiece. The Chiefs get the ball back, and in, and they would waste four minutes, go eight plays. They would only get 18 yards and have to punt. The Bengals get the ball back. It's nine minutes left in the fourth. It's a tied game. It feels terrible. But on third and three at the 36 of Cincinnati, Joe Burrow throws a deep pass for T. Higgins, and it's intercepted by Joshua Williams for the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Chiefs get a, a turnover back. They get the Mahomes fumble made up for, except they really don't because the Bengals were able to capitalize on the Mahomes fumble. The Chiefs were not able to capitalize on the Joe Burrow interception because another four minutes wasted would go by on seven plays of a game 50 yards and they would punt. 
they would eventually punt. From the Cincinnati 37 too. It was really windy. Butker had a made up field goal from more than 50 in the warm up, so they just said, nope, we're not gonna risk that. We're not gonna risk giving them the, that great that great field position. And here we go. The Bengals get the ball back with two minutes and 30 seconds left. It's 2020, it's a tied game, and it feels like a all too familiar nightmare scenario for the Kansas City Chiefs as the Bengals had a prime opportunity to kill the clock, go down, and get a game-winning field goal to send them to their second straight Super Bowl. At this point in the game, mind you, Juju Smith-Schuster had also been taken out with an injury, so the Chiefs just can't catch a break. So at this point, it's McCole Hardman, Juju Smith-Schuster, Kadarius Toney, Legereus Sneed, and Willie Gay, while having Patrick Mahomes on a bad ankle. So that's six injuries. It's essentially a practice squad at this point. And the Chiefs, it just, it feels like it's impossible for the Chiefs to come back at this point. Even though it's a tied game 2020, the Chiefs keep punting because they have to rely on rookies like Sky Moore who haven't gotten a whole lot of playing time this year. And because we have guys like Sky Moore in, that's allowing the Bengals to double and triple team Travis Kelsey. At one point, there was even a completed pass to Marcus Kemp, a bench rider for the Kansas City Chiefs that only comes in in situations like this. So we, we're having to throw uh, in the AFC Championship, we're having to rely on passes to Marcus Kemp and rookie Sky Moore, which is just an absolute nightmare scenario. You don't even have McCall Harmon, who I've been not so fond of in his time as a Chief, but even him, I would have much rather had to have relied on than Sky Moore and Marcus Kemp. You know, obviously you got guys like Marquez Valdez-Scantling who, who have had great games, but the problem is that now he's getting double teamed. Now he's not getting open because the Bengals are smart defensively and they know what they're doing. So with all these injuries, it just feels like a nightmare. But but the defense would just come up so incredibly clutch on this Bengals drive. On third and eight at the Cincinnati 35, Joe Burrow would be sacked by Chris Jones. It would take them out of field goal range and they would have no choice but to punt the football away. The Chiefs, with 30 seconds in the game, tied 2020, get the ball back. They get a Pacheco run for six yards. They take their timeout. Then on second and four, Mahomes throws an incomplete pass to Sky Moore, of course. Then on third and four, the unthinkable happens. Patrick Mahomes, on a bad ankle, scrambles right, getting pressured, scrambles for a whopping five yards to the Cincinnati 42. It's going to be a very, very long and nearly impossible field goal attempt for Harrison Bucker, except Joseph Osai. Defensive end for the Bengals, who had been playing a pretty decent game to this point, unnecessarily just shoves Patrick Mahomes to the ground after the play was over and he had stepped out of bounds. Shoves Mahomes to the ground. It's an obvious penalty. This gets called every single time. And you see that flag fly in. You know it's going to be a damn near impossible field goal for Bucker. And then the unnecessary roughness comes in. It's 15 yards and Harrison Bucker for 45 yards with three seconds left would clutch up incredibly hard and make the field goal for once the roles are reversed the tides have turned the tables have flipped it feels so good to finally out of these last three games the fourth time's the charm I guess finally be on the other end of the football. They line up for the game-winning kick. Harrison Bucker makes it. The Chiefs squib kick it with three seconds left to the Bengals, and they wouldn't get anything going. They get tackled. It's the end of the game. The Kansas City Chiefs, ladies and fucking gentlemen, for the third time in five years, are headed back to the goddamn Super Bowl. Oh my God. I've had to put up with this Bengals fan base on YouTube and Twitter for the last 392 days. I like to think of myself as a respectable person. I really do. Anytime I get respect from an opposing fan base on my YouTube channel, and listen, I read every comment on every video. I honest to God do. Uh, if you're a respectable person of the opposing team, I, I give you the same love back. It's all mutual, baby. You feel me? It's all the same energy. I've not ever in these three games or not based on my memory, gotten any sort of respect or love from the Bengals fan base. I said this on my stream, but you would think for a fan base that has seen nothing but mediocrity for four plus decades, they would be just a little bit more humble of the greatness they are witnessing on their team and their organization in the present. But they're not.
They're far from it. They've decided instead of being humble to become one of the most insufferable, arrogant, cocky, obnoxious fan bases in the league as based on what I've seen on Twitter and YouTube. And I'm not making an assumption about the entire fan base. Obviously, every fan base has your bad apples. Obviously, on Twitter, you're going to see a lot more bad apples than good apples. It's the real-life interactions which truly judge how great Bengals fans are. And while I have seen some good Bengals fans out there, and I'll let you know when you're a good one, and believe me, I have not seen hardly any in the last now four games that we've played the Bengals. Anytime I make a recap, I'm just making excuses, according to the Bengals fans. And I'm crying and coping and everything above the sun, according to Bengals fans. But it's quite interesting to see on Twitter now the amount of Bengal fans complaining and crying and whining and not shutting the hell up about the referees, claiming it was rigged, all this bullshit. No, 392 fucking days. I've had to sit back and take your bullshit. Take every fucking word you're saying because I can't defend myself. Congratulations, you narrowly escaped with three-point victories all three games in a row. And to your credit, the Chiefs also narrowly escaped by a three-point victory. The only difference is that we narrowly escaped hang on by a fucking thread with a practice squad receiving core. And if you think the referees were at fault for your loss to a practice squad receiving core, you can just shut the hell up. And if you think for one second that suddenly you can get away with making excuses about referees, about there being a script, and this and that, you're mistaken. For 392 days, I've had to eat every fucking word of yours. I've had to eat your shit. Well, guess what, buddy? You're eating ours now. Let's fucking go! Back in the Super Bowl, baby. Can't even believe it. Two weeks from now, Arizona, the Kansas City Chiefs are ending their season where they began. Let's fucking go. Go Chiefs, baby. See you in two weeks. Peace out.